Struggle in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss for all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. For civilian women, children, and men whose lives are distinguished by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free. Standing stiff before the king, there's a little English maiden sorrowing, there's a proud and tireless woman seeing pictures in the fire, there's a broken battered body on the wire, a scrap of paper, just a little scrap of paper in a yellow envelope and the whole world is a ruin, even hope. And the weather's to, to turn out far. Yes, thank Very emotional service. It certainly was, and I think actually uh, Reverend Dutchin always makes so much effort uh, to bring a, an original touch to each remembrance service, and he certainly did it in style today, didn't he? He did. You know? and, uh, but then, the you know, like, like most military padres, they invariably have the right words at the right time. Well, exactly. I mean, he's kind of. You realize I've just run up those steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, but yeah. all in all, I thought it was a very commendable effort. And fantastic that the town has turned out in the strength that it did. I've never seen um, our town hall gardens like that completely carpeted. Brilliant. With members of the Felix O family, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Really so good. There's one point you can get into the, into the show, Mike, I think it's to thank everybody yes. for all that they've done to contribute to this commemoration. And, and hopefully they'll turn up tonight for the beacon. Yes, so well. there is this evening, uh, isn't Because there? That's, that's going to be spectacular, particularly if the weather holds. OK, so now the weather is going to hold. That's good. I'll guarantee it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Graham. Lovely to see you. Well, I'm Therese Coffey, Member of Parliament for Suffolk Coastal, and it's my great honour to be here in Felixstowe today, uh, work alongside people from Felixstowe and Walton, who have been commemorating uh, those brave people who gave up their lives, the ultimate sacrifice. I've been really impressed by the number of people who've come out today to share that uh, commemoration, uh, both down at uh, the seafront, but also here in the cemetery with Commonwealth War Graves. This memory will continue to, I'm sure, happen every year, but of course, 
it is special 100 years after the signing of the armistice and it's a constant reminder to me as a member of parliament that we need to continue to try and find peace as our first port of call absolutely right i'd love to invite you to um the church at walton st mary's where we've been where we were doing a particular project which we hope to run into the future of the Walton 100 because we have the military personnel who died here was they were preparing for the First World War. They were buried in our grave, in, in our churchyard. So we have a mix of both military personnel and our own parishioners. So yeah. we, we might come to you and ask for a bit of support on our bid to uh, the lottery uh, to get some funding to do that. So. and the Remembrance Committee. As you can see, we have 163 torches being lit behind me. Each one represents a man, a father, a son, a brother, an uncle, or a husband. Each one represents a family that's been told the worst possible news about their loved ones. Each one represents a member of the Felix Day community. As we go through this roll call this evening, I'd like you to think about the effect this loss had on this small town. How is it possible that devastation in thousands can come from one war? So many headstones lined up in neat rows, each perfectly accounted for, logged forever in history, each of the stones, each grave, remember each one, an individual, real people, their death causing tragedy. Remember, we are told, honour their memory, never forget, with utmost respect. Carry that out. I did. Powerfully sad, mass loss, yet at the same time, each matters most to individuals. So mixed. Yet both experiences have indescribable pain. So tell me, how is it possible that devastation in thousands can come from one war? Harry Aldous died 22nd of September 1914, aged 39. Died 12th of October 1916, aged 22. Edward H. Alexander died 22nd of November 1917, aged unknown. Alan Fulcher died 13th of November 1916, aged 19. Robert Peter Backhouse died 22nd of September 1917. Aged 25. Stanley Lewis Garland, 24th of April, 1918, aged 15. Charles Baker died 8th of October, 1918, aged 20. George W. Gildersleeves, 31st of October, 1918, aged 18. Frederick Leggett died 15th of July 1916, aged 26. Gordon Carr Ellis died 13th of March 1918, aged 24.